Let's turn to India, Mumbai to be specific. The city has become the face of a changing India. Mumbai skyline, the poster boy of a pros prospering India. The towering skyscrapers reflecting India's towering ambitions. What happens when a building collapses in this very city? What happens when buildings collapse every year in Mumbai? Take a look at what happened last night. This is late last night. A ground plus three structure fell to the ground. 19 people died, at least 14 were injured. We were 12 people in one room. Two have been rescued while 10 are still trapped. My brother and people from my village are still trapped there. Earlier this month, another building collapsed. At least two people died, 16 were injured. Two days later, there was a similar incident in another part of the city. The roof of a building gave way. At least one person died. This is an annual pattern. Come monsoon, buildings invariably collapse in Mumbai. In 2021, at least 228 buildings caved in. Between 2013 and 2019, 3,945 structures collapsed in Mumbai, almost 4,000. 200 people died. Nearly 1,200 were injured. The most basic question is why? Why do buildings fall like a pack of cards in Mumbai? And to answer this, we must understand Mumbai. This is among India's most populous cities. Mumbai is the city of Bollywood, the city of Dalal Street. Every year, at least 200,000 people move to Mumbai. Many in search of livelihood, many in search of stardom, many to chase their dreams. Mumbai is also called the city of dreams. But this city can house only so many dreams. Mumbai is all of 603 square kilometers. It has an urban population of 22 million. This number has more than doubled since 1991. The land, of course, has not expanded over the years. Today, 73,000 people live per square mile of Mumbai. It's as densely populated as it can get and the land as premium as it can get. So the people living in Mumbai are often forced to settle for any kind of housing their budget can get them. Many live in illegal buildings, many in old dilapidated structures. The building that collapsed was dilapidated. The authorities had asked its tenants to vacate. A notice was issued some five to six years ago, but the residents chose to stay back. The first heavy rain of the season and this building collapsed. Authorities are still searching for life beneath the rubble. There are some more people which are still trapped and attempts are being made to rescue them with the help of NDRF, BMC's fire department team, LWAR team and the police. So what happens when such stories come out of Mumbai every year? First, they make headlines around the world. In China, in Western news agencies, they send a message of apathy. They raise extremely uncomfortable questions, be it about the lack of safety or the lack of accountability. Mumbai's municipal body says it is doing its job. It's called the BMC, the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation. Every year, the BMC publishes a list of dilapidated buildings, but every year, tenants move court. Many manage to get a stay order. 337 buildings were issued a notice this year. Electricity and water supply was cut to 102 buildings. 113 buildings were evacuated, but occupants of 122 others moved court. Many signed letters of undertaking. They said they're staying back at their own risk. Among them were residents of the building that collapsed last night. Its tenants had nowhere to go. Like I mentioned before, land is premium in Mumbai. Renting a place is not easy. The security money alone runs into lakhs of rupees. In Kurla, the area where this building is located, was located, a two-bedroom apartment costs around 35,000 rupees a month. That's over $443. And that too for a 700 square feet property. A three bedroom apartment costs around 70,000 rupees, $886. These buildings are unaffordable to most. Enter illegal buildings. They're cheaper because they're constructed on unauthorized land by underqualified people using inferior material. A lot of the buildings that fall fall under this category because they are illegal. They do not even feature on the BMC list and the government does not want to touch these structures because the tenants are vote banks. 
Speaking of which, the legislative representative of Kurla, the man who was elected by the people of this area, is nowhere close to the collapse site. His name is, his name is Mangesh Kundalkar. He's currently in a resort in Guwahati, rebelling against his party leaders. Why? Because this monsoon, it's not just the buildings that are falling. The government of the state of Maharashtra is also on the verge of collapse. That's a story for another day. Today, we focus on the buildings. The latest collapse is a reminder. It's time to put vote bank politics aside, to focus on saving lives. Mumbai needs regular audits. Its people need affordable housing and viable alternatives to fix dilapidated structures. This is the financial capital of India. The least it can do is ensure that its people are safe in their homes. What happened in Mumbai last night was a man-made disaster, full stop. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.